Okay, let's draw some Lewis structures. So for the first step, we need to sum up the valence electrons of all the atoms in the polyatomic ion or molecule. So do you remember how we do valence electrons? For example, phosphorus is in group 5A, so that means we have five valence electrons. Chlorine is in group 7A, so that would be seven valence electrons, but we do have three chlorine atoms, so in this case, it all adds up to be 26 valence electrons. Now, this molecule has no charge. If it had a charge, for example, if it was an anion, that means we would need to add one more electron for each negative charge. For example, if it was a two minus, then we would add two electrons. Three minus, three electrons. Now, if it was a cation, then we would need to subtract one electron because cations means we lose electrons. So we would need to subtract one electron for each positive charge. Again, if it was two plus, that would mean we would subtract two electrons. So now that you have the total number of Vance electrons, now you know how many electrons you need to use in your structure. You can't have more than that, and you can't have less than that. We can't create or destroy matter, right? So these are the number of electrons we need to make sure that we keep track of. All right, so step one, you've summed up the van. The next thing we need to do is to draw the skeletal structure, which means you need to come up with the central atom and the peripheral atoms. So usually the central atom is the least electronegative element, and we for sure can't use hydrogen as a central atom. So once we have the skeletal structure, then you connect the outer atoms, the peripheral atoms, to the central atom with single bonds. Now you have to keep track of every time you use an electron. So remember, a bond is two electrons. So we have used three bonds, which gives us a total of six bonding electrons. We would subtract six bonding electrons from 26. That gives us 20 left to use. Now note, we subtracted six bonding electrons. We did not subtract three bonds because we're keeping track of the individual electrons and every bond has two electrons. All right, so now once we have the bonding electrons put in, the next step is to complete the octet around the peripheral atoms. So chlorine had two electrons in a bond. Now to complete the octet, that means we would need six more. So we place the electrons around chlorine in pairs. So we've put six more for a total of eight. So we did that for one chlorine, and we'll do that for each of the other chlorines. So how many of these dots did we place in our structure? So if we count them all up, we would see that we placed 18 electrons. So we need to keep track of our electrons, so that's 20 minus 18 electrons that we use to complete the octet in the peripheral atoms. That leaves us with two remaining electrons. What do we do with the two remaining electrons? We'll see in the next step. As a side note here, hydrogen would never have a complete octet with eight. It is complete with two because of the S subshell. So let's see what the next step is. Once we have completed the peripheral octets, the next thing is to place the remaining electrons, so for us that was two in this structure, two electrons on the central atom. And now we would check to make sure the central atom has an octet, and there's our structure. We're done. Well, what if we've gone through all the steps and we find that our central atom does not have a complete octet? What would we do then? Well, let's take a look at this example. We have carbon as a central atom, and after going through all the steps, we find that carbon only has four electrons. It has two electrons in this bond and two electrons in this bond, so it makes a total of four, but we need to get to eight. So what would we do in that case? This is when we think about forming multiple bonds, such as double bonds or triple bonds. Now, do not try to start with double bonds or triple bonds in step one. This is the time we start is when we have already reached zero electrons left and we do not have a complete octet on the central atom. So in other words, the last step you want to do is with multiple bonds. Don't try it in the beginning. So in this case, we would see, all right, well, what are we going to do? We can't create more electrons. We can't just put in a bond here. We can't do that because we can't have any more electrons than what we started with. We've already used up our electrons, so what should we do? 
In this case, we look around and say, wow, carbon needs somebody, needs some more electrons. Who can share some electrons? And nitrogen's like, well, I got some. I'll share some. So we put a couple of them over there. So these electrons right here can be moved over. These electrons right here can be shared and moved over so that we would have a triple bond. Now, this gives carbon eight electrons. Let's count them. Two here, two here, two here, and two here. That's a total of eight. But what about nitrogen? It was sharing electrons. Did that affect its octet? Well, let's see. Two here, four, six, eight. No, it doesn't affect nitrogen not having a complete octet. So in this example, we have a triple bond and everybody has a complete octet. Now notice hydrogen, though, remember, only has two electrons, but that is all that hydrogen can hold. So this is our Lewis structure.